Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. This is my lab activity video and in this lab activity video, I am going to discuss about the preparation of sodium thiosulfate solution or hyposolution. This hyposolution is very very important for the iodometric and iodimetric titrations. So here we are going to discuss the preparation of hyposolution and its standardization using K2Cr2O7 solution. I will also show you the lab activity and at the end of this video I am going to discuss how to prepare N by 80 hyposolution from the stock solution of N by 10 hyposolution because that N by 80 hyposolution is used for the determination of dissolved oxygen that is very very important right so let's start with the video so before discuss about the preparation of hyposolution or sodium thiosulfate solution I am giving you the brief discussion about the sodium thiosulfate. So this sodium thiosulfate is having formula Na2S2O3. Sometimes it is given 3H2O and sometimes it is given 5H2O. So you must check the pack which you have for this sodium thiosulfate. Because according to this water molecules your molecular formula will be changed. So I am having a pack of Na2S2O3.5H2O pentahydrated and its molecular weight is 248.2 grams per mole. Its structure is given like this here sodium Na2S2O3 right. So this thios unit is attached with two sodium atoms. This sodium thiosulfate is also known as sodium hyposulfite. That is why we sometimes abbreviated it as hyposolution. Now we are coming to the preparation of sodium thiosulfate solution. The weight of sodium thiosulfate solution preparation I have taken 6.205 grams in 250 ml. So you may have a question how you have taken this weight. So I have done a rough calculations here. So here the formula is weight is equal to molarity into molecular weight into volume divided by 1000 only if your volume is in ml so this is the formula and after solving this i get 6.205 grams in 250 ml you may change this volume this 1000 is just to convert this ml into liters so this is the weight if you want to change the volume you can change here and you will get the calculations accordingly for example, if I will take 100 ml of solution, I need to prepare 100 ml of solution, then I need to take 2.48 grams of sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate. So this is how you can prepare the sodium thiosulfate solution. Here I am going to show you the lab activity. First I am preparing the sodium thiosulfate solution. For that I am going to weigh this sodium thiosulfate it is pentahydrated and the weight I have taken is 6.027 and I have added it into 250 ml and then I have taken it into the burette. Now coming to the standardization of hypo solution. So the standardization of this hypo solution will be done by the K2Cr2O7. Now the question comes why K2Cr2O7 you have taken? This K2Cr2O7 is behaves like an oxidizing agent as well as it is a primary standard and here this sodium thiosulfate behaves as reducing agent. So that is why I have taken this K2Cr2O7 an oxidizing agent which is a primary standard too. Now the next question comes what is primary standard? So primary standard compounds are those compounds which are extremely pure, stable as well as their concentration remains constant throughout the time. Secondly, reaction of analyte with primary standard should be reasonably fast, complete and can be described by chemical reaction which this K2Cr2O7 satisfy all these conditions. That is why we have used this K2Cr2O7 here in this experiment. Now, how to prepare the solution of K2Cr2O7? Some of the students need to prepare the normal solution of K2Cr2O7 
एंड सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स नीड टू प्रिपेयर द के टू सी आर टू ओ सेवन इन मोलर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन तो फॉर बोथ केसेज आई एम गिविंग यू द एक्सप्लेनेशन एंड कैलकुलेशन हेयर दिस के टू सी आर टू ओ सेवन इन एसिडिक मीडियम रिएक्ट एंड दिस क्रोमियम फ्रॉम प्लस सिक्स ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट टू चेंज प्लस थ्री ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट एंड इन दिस रिएक्शन सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर इन्वॉल्व because of this six electrons we are having the molecular weight and equivalent weight different for this k2cr2o7 so molecular weight of k2cr2o7 is 294.8 grams per mole and since six electrons are involved in the reaction of k2cr2o7 so its equivalent weight is equal to molecular weight divided by 6 and it gives me 49.03 grams per mole so here important thing is that if you are preparing your solution in normals then you need to take equivalent weight so here i have written the formula weight is equal to normality into equivalent weight into volume in ml divided by 1000 to convert it into liters so here i am putting all the values n by 10 solution which i need to prepare into equivalent weight which is equal to 49.03 into 100 ml solution which i want to prepare right so divided by 1000 so after solving this i will get 0.49 grams of k2cr2o7 to prepare n by 10 solution of this k2cr2o7 in 100 ml so this is the calculation for those students who want to prepare this k2cr2o7 solution in normality if you want to prepare molar solution of this k2cr2o7 then the calculation will be little different so you need to write here the formula weight is equal to molarity into molecular weight into 100 ml or the volume which you need to prepare if it is in ml then you need to divide it by 1000 so i have kept all the values here i want to prepare m by 10 solution and uh, its molecular weight is 294.18 and i want to prepare 100 ml of the solution so how much weight of k2cr2o7 i need to dissolve in 100 ml of solution so weight is equal to 2.94 g of k2cr2o7 need to be dissolved to prepare m by 10 k2 cr2 o7 solution in 100 ml i have prepared m by 10 solution of k2 cr2 o7 so please remember if you are preparing in molarity you need to go by this formula if you need to prepare in normal solutions then you go with this formula right so that is all depends on your experiment so this is the solution of k2 cr2 o7 m by 10 and i have taken 10 ml of this solution to this i am going to add potassium iodide here i have taken this this is in excess so i have taken 0.5 grams of potassium iodide i have added this and i let this conical flask and to this solution i am going to add 1 ml of concentrated hcl you can see the color of the reaction so this color of brown color is because of the iodine which is produced and again i wrap this and i leave it for some time i need to wrap this container with a brown paper but i just for showing in in the lab activity i have not done so that burette reading is zero this is the initial reading of the burette you can see after few minutes we are going to titrate this solution against this sodium thiosulfate solution so i am going to titrate this do not vigorously shake the conical flask so once the color of this solution on reacting with sodium thiosulfate is painted we will keep doing the titration so it is slightly light it should i can add more drops also but i didn't do that so to this solution i am going to add that 
two three drops of starch and here you can see the beautiful color, purple color of starch iodine complex so this is the color of starch iodine complex so here this color is very intense and now we are going to start again the titrations you see that change in color and this greenish color is just because of the chromium ions right so in the final reading of the burette is you can see this is 9.8 now coming to the reactions involved in the experiment so this k2cr2o7 in the presence of acid it produces cr3 plus right and at the same time it produces nascent oxygen this is the molecular equation for this k2cr2o7 here it is written in terms of h2so4 but hcl can also be used so this nascent oxygen reacts with the potassium iodide which i have previously added to the k2cr2o7 in the presence of hcl this nascent oxygen produces 3 moles of iodine. So here what you have seen 1 mole of K2Cr2O7 on reaction with Ki in the presence of acid produces 3 moles of iodine. And this iodine seems is insoluble in water and it readily escapes from that from the titration mixture. Therefore we have added excess of Ki to the solution. And this Ki reacts with the produced iodine and forms I3- or Ki3 ions, right? And in this manner, it won't escape from the solution. This iodine, which is produced over there, reacts with sodium thiosulfate and produces Na2S4O6. So here, what you are seeing? One mole of iodine reacts with two moles of sodium thiosulfate this k2cr2o7 produces three moles of iodine so for one mole of k2cr2o7 we need six moles of na2s2o3 that i am going to explain in my upcoming slide so here i have written the answer i2 is weakly soluble in water and in the excess of potassium iodide, it, it reacts with that and produces I3 minus ions which are soluble in water. And in this manner, the produced iodine will not escape from the titrating mixture. So this may be a question of viva. Now coming to the calculation parts. One mole of K2Cr2O7 produces three moles of iodine and each mole of iodine, we need two mole of sodium thiosulfate. So for 3 mole of iodine, we need 6 moles of sodium thiosulfate. So what we can say against 1 mole of K2Cr2O7, 6 moles of Na2S2O3 or sodium thiosulfate is required. So this can be written in this manner. And the calculation part will be done by this. M1V1 for K2Cr2O7 divided by 1, this 1. M2V2 Na2S2O3 divided by 6, this 6. If I simplify this equation, I will write in this manner. You can relate with the titrations which I have discussed earlier for titration of K2Cr2O7 with ferrous ammonium sulfate and KMnO4 with ferrous ammonium sulfate. So here we can say for redox titrations, we are using the formula A1M1V1 is equal to A2M2V2. So what is A1? A1 is the number of electrons gained by the K2Cr2O7 per formula unit in a balanced half cell reaction. Similarly, A2 is the number of electrons lost by the sodium thiosulfate per formula unit in the balanced half cell reaction. So here A1 is 6 and A2 is 1. So here what you have seen is 6 for K2Cr2O7 and this for Na2S2O3. We are using this formula. Now the observation table. So in the titration, I have taken 10 ml of K2Cr2O7 solution. The initial reading of the burette is 0. The final reading of the burette is 9.8 and their difference is 9.8. So the calc coming to the precautions we need to take care of while performing the titrations. 
So first is that we need to avoid the vigorous shaking as well as direct exposure to the sunlight because direct sunlight accelerates the rate of aerial oxidation of the iodine ions that interfere in the titration, right? To avoid this direct sunlight exposure, it should be done in the dark brown glass wares. The second point is that what is the preferred pH range for doing this titration? So the preferred pH range is 4 to 5.5. That is acidic range is preferred. In the basic medium, iodine reacts with the hydroxide ions and it produces the iodate as per this reaction. One more thing which I bring to your notice, at very low pH also initiates the aerial oxidation of iodine. 4 to 5.5 is the preferred pH range for doing this titration. Now coming to the preparation of N by 80 hypo solution from the stock solution of N by 10 sodium thiosulfate solution. So this N by 80 hypo solution is equal to 0.0125 normal hypo solution. Here you may have a question why we are preparing it from the stock solution why not preparing it from the direct way that I will tell you later on. So to prepare this N by 80 hypo solution from the stock solution we are using this normality equation. N1 is N by 80 which you want to prepare. V1 is the volume which you need to prepare. And this is equal to the normality, say I am having an example of N by 10 normal solution of sodium thiosulfate is available with me. On solving this, we are having 12.5 ml of N by 10 solution in 100 ml. So here first I am taking this standardized N by 10 hypo solution 12.5 ml. After that, you add distilled water to this to make up it up to 100 ml for the mark. So, in this manner, you are going to prepare the N by 80 sodium thiosulfate solution from the stock solution of N by 10 thiosulfate or hypo solution. This is also known as dilution method. Now, the question which I ask, so why we are preparing this by dilution method? We are not preparing it by direct weighing method. Simply we can weigh and we add up to this mark still water and then we prepare this NIAT. Actually for low concentration the weight is very low and if weight is very low so there may be chances of the deviation from the concentration if any of the manual error is done over there. So and as well as the standardization of that solution is also sometimes difficult because of the sensitivity of low concentration. So that may be the reason. So generally we prepare the stock solution and then low concentration will be prepared from there. So guys, I hope you find this lab activity and the concept which I have discussed here in detail helpful and useful for you. If you find the same, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.